Hello again everybody, so today I'm back and today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favourite times of the year for reading. It's one of those times of year that really pushes me out of my comfort zone and to read things of a genre that I don't normally cover that much and I'm super excited to share with you today my top five reading recommendations for Halloween. So these are the books that I think are perfect for this time of year. It's a bit darker outside, it's a bit cosy, it's a bit creepy, and these are perfect books for that exact feeling of that exact time of year, and I can't think of anything better to be reading around Halloween. So first up, we're going to start off with a real classic, a real master of the horror genre, and that's H.P. Lovecraft. So this is a recent collection of his fiction that came out a couple of years ago now, but obviously it's a beautiful package anyway. But essentially, this is a collection of H.P. Lovecraft's writings. It's got some of his best-known stuff, called the Cthulhu, etc. But it's also got, like, a real broad range of his stories. I think there's about nine or ten in here, and it's a really good one. You can't beat the classics quite often. And I think in terms of creating a really creepy, quite terrifying tone, there's not much that does that better than Lovecraft himself. Now, one of the things that I really love reading at this time of year isn't necessarily properly overtly horror stuff, but it's the kind of gothic-y fiction, the kind of really atmospheric, a little bit creepy, but not in like a scary way, just in a slightly unsettling way. And there's been a really good barrage of that kind of stuff this year. And the first one is one I talked about on the channel quite a lot. And that's The Silent Companions, which obviously is super pretty and super creepy at the same time with the little eye poking through the keyhole there. Terrifying. But essentially the concept behind this is that it's a widow, Elsie, who goes to her husband's estate and gets there and finds it a bit decrepit, it's crumbling, there's not many staff left, all the villagers are kind of avoiding the house as much as they can. And one day she goes into this previously locked room and she finds the door open unexpectedly, goes in and finds this standee called a Silent Companion, which essentially is what this is. It's essentially like a cardboard cutout, but really decorative and not like the kind of thing you buy in HMV nowadays, but more like the kind of, a little bit more artistic, but equally creepy and Elsie loves this thing that she finds and she puts it in the house and then she starts to find it in different places each day and she's sure that the eyes have followed her and it's got this really atmospheric gothic nature it's basically all set in this weird like crumbling mansion with this really odd cast of characters and it's just quite unsettling and quite unnerving and you never really know what direction it's going to go in but it's absolutely brilliant. I loved it. I was terrified and I literally read it in the height of summer but I think it's a perfect one to be reading this Halloween. And in a similar gothic vein is actually the book that I'm reading this Halloween and that's Devil's Day by Andrew Michael Hurley. So this is the guy that wrote The Loney, which won the Costa First Novel Award in the past couple of years. And The Loney, similarly, was a really, like, interesting set on the British coast, north somewhere, I can't remember which side of the country, but it's a really gothic, like, stormy, moody setting. And this follows much of step in the footsteps of that. It's This one seems to be very steeped in folklore. It's about a kind of village, again, really rural, really far up north, where there was a disastrous accident. There was an avalanche, and this avalanche, it seemed that the whole village believed that the devil was loose at the same time. Animals were becoming ill unexpectedly. People were becoming ill, and then people started dying off in greater numbers. And eventually 13 people died in this town. This picks up a good few years later, and it's essentially about the people that still live in this town and are there, and the way that this folklore and this mythology is kind of seeped into their everyday lives. But as you can tell from the cover, it's quite a moody landscape. Um, it's quite a like, it's quite gothic and quite dark. Um, but his writing is so good. I mean, the lonely, the way they describe the settings is incredible, and I'm really hoping this will do the same thing in a slightly different way. Now, taking it. A rather more modern take on horror is Hex. So this isn't the final cover, this is a proof that I had. But essentially this is about a small town in America where they have this, the ghost of a woman, an old woman covered in chains who was like chained and then um, kind of captured and her spirit was was kind of kept in that place. But she's got this weird uncanny ability of like appearing in different places in town and everyone knows to expect her. So if they turn up, they just know call this number, don't look at her, throw a sheet over her, pretend she's not there and carry on, which is a very odd saying in the first place. But it means that the kids that live there can't go and live elsewhere, they can't have friends from out of town over. It's a very, like, um, claustrophobic enclosed setting. And the main character of this is one of the kids who decides, actually, he doesn't want this for his life. He wants to be able to go and 
have people over from school and he wants people to go and move away and get married and he knows none of that's possible. So him and his friends set out to document the witch, which is completely illegal in his town. It's really badly like punished if you try and document her. And they try and get rid of the curse as well. And it's about the way the town falls apart and the way that they kind of turn on each other and the different factions there. It's a really interesting take on horror. It has got really standard horror elements, a witch that appears out of nowhere, creepy timing, but it's also quite like modern. It's got a lot of things about social media and kind of um, adolescence and growing up. And it's a really interesting mixture and it's quite different to a lot of other horror out there. Last up then is some non-fiction. Now you might think that's a bit odd, but this, once you see it, you'll understand why. And that's Law, the world of law, monstrous creatures. So this is based on the podcast Law which basically is by this guy, Aaron Mankey, who essentially what he does is he examines um, creatures and stories and tales and topics from mythology and folklore and basically looks at where the myths came from, the way they've been used, the historical basis, um, the way that they've developed over time. And it's a really interesting kind of part history, part pop culture Part fiction, because obviously a lot of these things have been fictionalised over time. And it's a really interesting look at all of these kind of classic werewolves and vampires and zombies and all this kind of stuff. Where it came from and exploring basically the whole cultural invention of these things. It's a really interesting podcast and I'm really excited to read this. It's got really, really interesting, if I can find any now illustrations um things like this just that really pretty stuff but also it's got the same kind of tone and humor as the um podcast has so i think if you've not listened to the podcast definitely give it a listen but the book is definitely worth a read too it's a really good encyclopedia of basically weird stuff but in a really great way and could be perfect for halloween so there we have it That is my Halloween reading recommendation. Five very different books, probably as long as you're not a massive wimp, which I used to be. It's taken a long time to get to this point. But if you are interested in reading something a little bit creepier over the the Halloween season, there's a great selection of books out. The Minute is a really good time to be liking this kind of stuff, whether it's classic horror or gothic or much more modern horror or some non-fiction interesting background stuff. It's a really great selection of books that you could read this Halloween. I'd love to hear what you guys are reading this Halloween. I think there's so much out there and I know a lot of people that also like to read something a bit lighter and fluffier over Halloween because, I mean, it's It's not a particularly pleasant time of year. It's all a bit dark and depressing and so some people like to read things that are a bit more uplifting and I get that, but I'd love to hear what kind of thing you guys are reading over the next few weeks and stuff and it'd be really great if you've got any suggestions for other things like these as well. These are all books that I've enjoyed or I'm super excited to read, so anything in the same ballpark, probably going to be quite good for me so do let me know what you think other than that my links to twitter and goodreads and all the usual stuff is down below do leave a like and subscribe and comment if you've enjoyed it's super appreciated and we're not far off a thousand subscribers now and i've got a big giveaway plan so i'm super excited to share with you guys what i've got planned for that but other than that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon with my next video